pick up some stuff. I got to cook. Oh, let's go get the broccoli. It feels simple, y'all. Really simple. You know what? Actually, they got a good deal on a uh, five-pound bag. Of course. <laughs> I almost forgot to get the mushrooms, y'all. Can't do that. And then so these uh, patties can be a little bit juicy. I almost forgot to get the mush. This is paying homage to my mom. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tanya Lady T. And what are we doing? We're in the kitchen cooking. Yes. I want to start this week off by doing a theme. And guess what, y'all? The theme is all surrounded by who? Mama. Come on in, my mama. So anyway, for some of y'all who are trying to be funny, talking about I don't support, go sit down and have a seat. So anyway, I wanted to do a quote-unquote theme week of recreating some of my mother's recipes that she perhaps has already posted on her channel. Come on in. And let me just say this. Um, I'm going to link her channel at the end of the video and also in the description. I don't know what's going on, but sometimes I'll post all that information. It's in my default settings to upload and post her channel, my main channel. For those of you who don't know, I have another channel as well. But anyway, I wanted to just do this week, Sunday through Thursday, and do nothing but videos that support her channel so of course please go over to come on in go on and subscribe and on most of my sunday videos what i try to do is link her you know subscribe button so that you can click because a lot of times her video may not be up for sunday dinner because she's got to do a lot of editing blah 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 it just takes her a little bit longer so my goal is to try to link her Sunday dinner videos to the actual flavor train so that you all can click on that video right after you watch us eating so you can see how she prepared what we just ate. But a lot of times her videos are not up. So I'll try to link her channel, uh, you know, subscribe button at the end of each one of my Sunday videos. But again, this week is dedicated to Mama. So show her some love. Let's get her to 10,000 subscribers plus by the end of this year. Can we do it? Can we do it? So anyway, what I'm doing today, because I've got to cook for Mr. Silverhawks, uh, I'm doing hamburger steak or just hamburger patties with onion, gravy, mushrooms, and I'm making some homemade mashed potatoes, and we're doing broccoli. So that's what we're doing today. Again, these are my themed videos in support of my mama. Check out her channel. Come on in. Share it with everybody so they'll know where to go. They get on the flavor train. Then they come on in over there so they can see how we got there on the flavor train. So anyway, let me run, enough of me running my money, my mouth. Okay, so what I've got in this pot is some water. This is for my potatoes. I've got a pot over there for um, the broccoli, and right now, that's what I'm doing right now, just taking the broccoli, and I'm cutting it up. So, everything that I'm going to show you now, is going to, you're not going to necessarily see my face, I'm going to just pan it down, so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. So, this is real simple, you just cut off the ends, and then I'll just take this pot and bring it over here. I've already put a, just a little bit of butter in it. These are already cleaned. And you just break your florets off. And you make as many, as much as you want. And you can make these florets as big as you'd like. I'm just doing different sizes. See that stem? Let me put this over here for you. See that stem? You just cut that bad boy off. And some people like the stems. They'll cook it.
okay so it's full and the only other thing I'm gonna put on here of course I'm gonna put some onion powder some salt and some John Brown pepper And I get this from the or the Asian market. This is chicken flavored paste. And I'm going to put about a half of a teaspoon. And this is really good. It's got a real good, good garlic chicken flavor. And I use this in lieu of, some people use bouillon cubes or, or something like that. That's, that's what I use. And I'm going to just go in and turn that on. Like I said, I've got like a half a cup of water in here and some butter. And I'm going to go ahead on and cut that bad boy on like eight so it can bring it to a boil. And then we'll move on to the next step. We'll get the potatoes going. Okay, y'all, the next thing we're going to do is just peel these potatoes. I got me a bag of white potatoes and just peel the skin off. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About three large and four small potatoes. And again, this is just real simple. You rest your thumb up against that potato. Or if some of y'all have pillars, you can buy the pillars. I'm old school. I like to use my, you know, my hand. And of course, if you see these little brown dots, just cut them off. Most potato bags of potatoes, you're going to have potatoes that's going to have little brown spots in them. And you just cut them out and keep on moving. Okay, when I come back, we'll, all these will be peeled and we'll just drop them in the hot water. All right, y'all, this is the last one. It's going in the water. Okay, you're going to let these boil till you stick a fork in it, and your fork doesn't give you any resistance. It goes straight through. And then, of course, your peelings. I peel them right over this bag. So all I got to do now is throw it in the trash. And let's move to the next step. Okay, y'all, now we're going to go ahead on and get the hamburger patties going. Um, I, I got the 73% because I wanted to have a little bit of fat to it so it will be moist and juicy. And I'm just going to use half of this. This is a um, three almost three and a half pounds. So I'm going to just use it right down the middle and save the rest for maybe spaghetti or something. So we're just going to take that on out of here. And put it on in this bowl. I got this bowl over here. Same bowl I used with the potatoes. I just rinsed it out. And you can use the same bowl. Y'all know how to do it. So you won't use, be used, dirtying up a whole bunch of dishes. Sit that over here out of the way. Okay. Now I've told you. Well, I don't know if I've told y'all before. I like to mix my beef up. Because I don't like those little stringly things to show. So I'll go ahead on and mix it up to get rid of those squeaky lines. And then that broccoli, I've got it stuffed in that pan because I want it to like get the seasonings from the steam. Because I really want to steam them. I'm not trying to cook them thoroughly. Just steam them so we still get those nutrients from the broccoli. 
And Mr. Silver Fox likes his uh, broccoli a little bit, not tough, but a little, has a, still has a little bite to it. Okay? Okay, now let me wash my hands right quick because we're going to, because I need to grab my seasoning. So we get ready to season this neck. I also want to show y'all something. What I'm doing with this, since it's already measured out, I just cut this in half. And some of y'all already know to do this. I cut it in half. I take this as saran wrap. Or if you got large Ziploc freezer bags. And just re-wrap it up. Look at there. Rewrap it up. And then go and take another piece and go the opposite way. This way. Flip it down. Pull it taut. This way. And you're good to go. Suction all that air out that you can. Squeeze all the air that you can out. And put this down in the uh, freezer bag if you got one. And you're ready for the next go round. Spaghetti, tacos, <laughs> ole. Okay, y'all, I got a half of an onion left. And I'm going to just dice some up in here. Y'all know I got to have onions on the inside. So, go ahead on and get us some onion going up in there. Just finely diced. About that small. Okay. Put that in there. I'm gonna crack an egg in that bad boy. My trash can's right behind me. Okay, and now we're gonna start with our seasonings. We're gonna do some black pepper. And again, you season this to your tasting. I'm going to do some salt. Some onion powder. Of course, y'all know I'm generous with that. <laughs> uh, we got some garlic powder going on. Some season on Ooh, right out of that a little accent I just do a dash of accent and then we're gonna do some minced all-natural garlic let me get a little spoon About a half a teaspoon. Okay. And one of the things I love to do is uh, put all jus gravy in it. Just a little bit. Because we're going to also make gravy. But I like to also mix it in with the meat. Fabulous, honey. Fabulous. Okay, and then you just, you can put your gloves, but I'm using my hand. Like I said, it's just me and Mr. Silver Fox, and we're going to just mix that in. And I'm not putting any breadcrumbs in it, because I, like I said, I want I wanted to still be like a burger. But I needed the egg in here to bind it together so that gravy would do right. Or if I was making a meatloaf, I'd put bread crumbs in it. But just for a regular burger, I, I don't I don't put a, any bread crumbs in mine. Every once in a while I will, but it just dep depends on the flavor I'm trying to achieve. Okay, so we've got that mixed in real good. And the next thing we're going to do... I'm just going to use my same cutting board right here. And we're just going to pat out 
these patties. And you can make them as big as you want to. Again, I like to make mine the palm, the size of the palm of my hand. And these will reduce down in size because, like I said, the fat content is 73, or the lean portion, I should say, is 73, or the 27% fat. Okay. And then I take my knuckle and sort of make an indention. Okay. Should be able to get four or five good size. I should be able to get five. Again, this is just paying homage to my mama. Different recipes she's given to me throughout the years. I've modified it a little bit. But the theme is just paying homage to mama on come on in. Cooking dinner. recipes my mama has shown me and cooked for me and my siblings throughout the years and that's what it's about so y'all have to go on over to her channel and see all the other fabulous recipes that she has cooked for me my family extended family and friends Yes, we love Mama. Yes, we do. Okay, that's the last one. And what I'm going to do is clean up and we'll move on to the next step, y'all. Okay, y'all see how that broccoli has reduced? So we can just cut that completely off. Cause that's done and it'll just sit in the juices and seasonings that is done completely done okay y'all now we're gonna put our patties in the skillet we don't have to put any olive oil or any grease because like I said it's 27% fat cook about four or five minutes on each side and we'll flip them and I'll show you what we'll be doing while we're waiting on these to cook. Alright y'all it's time to flip. It's been about five minutes. Oh look at that beautiful color. And these are thick so that's why you have to cook them a little bit longer on each side. Okay. I'm going to let these cook for about three minutes, open, and then I'm going to cover it. So we know that the inside, the middle part is fully done. Alright, let's check on the potatoes. Okay, here's my fork. It's still giving me a little resistance. Let's check this big one. Yeah. So... If it's still stiff like that, you know it's not done. So probably another 10 minutes. So you have to boil these potatoes sometimes 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, y'all. Y'all see I've got the lid on the meat. And what we're going to do while we're waiting on that to finish cooking almost thoroughly, we're going to uh, take our mushrooms. And now this is optional. It's up to you if you want mushrooms in your gravy. And what I, will, what I like to do is y'all take them. I've already, they're already pre-sliced and pre-cleaned, but you know, I always take them and rinse them in this little container, and I just do a rough chop, I just run my knife through them, I don't dice them, I'm just rough chopping them. Let me 
get another plate to put these on. See how that's just a rough chop. over here and then of course y'all know I don't play around I don't told y'all about playing with me I got a whole sweet Vidalia onion I like yellow onions in certain recipes like if I'm doing a spaghetti the yellow onions are very strong and sometimes I just don't like that strong taste in my hamburger because when it's to me yellow onions can be very bitter tasting and I don't like that bitter taste and so what I'm gonna do is just cut this let me see I'm sorry can y'all even see what I'm doing I'm gonna just cut this onion in half and then I'm gonna cut it downward because it gives me like the half moon cut that end off I want to use that end and I like my thickness to be about like that okay and you just put them right here on top of your mushrooms and you're just pretty much separating them out See, they're just half moons. Put that in, dog. Okay, and just separate them that way. When you put them in the pan with your gravy, they're already be separated. Okay. I'm not gonna put any season. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna put just a dash of salt on it and let it sit till I'm ready to make my gravy. Okay, and these are what I'm putting in the skillet with my gravy to make my gravy. Okay, y'all. Look at that beautiful meat. Would you just look at that? Are you kidding me? See how they reduce the size? Okay, y'all, we're gonna take them out of the pan so we can go in and make that gravy. And I'm gonna show you how I make my gravy, the Lady T style. Okay, now, you see the bottom of that pan, spray for all that goodness, y'all, all that goodness, please. Now we're going to pour all these onions and mushrooms in that. Stir that around in there. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. That's how you do it. Bust the onions up. The ones that didn't want to cooperate and separate themselves, bust them up, bust them up, bust them up. Gonna taste it. Oh, that that gravy from the just that meat cooking. Are you kidding me? Get back in this. Get back in this. Get back in this pan. 
All right, y'all. Just going to get the gravy part going. I'll make it my way using the gravy packets. Okay, y'all. I know how to make pan gravy from scratch, but like I said, when you're a working woman, you ain't got time to do all that. I mean, it's simple enough, but I like the flavor of McCormick. This is a half a cup, excuse me, a cup and a half of water. And I just, I'm pouring the rest of that Arju gravy in there. And then I'm using this brown gravy packet. And you use the whole packet. Stir that up. And one thing about this powder is so fine that you don't you won't have lumps and stuff in it. And you just stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. And you pour that John Brown gravy off in there. Oh, it's gonna make you run to your mama house and slap. Not really. <laughs> See that y'all? Oh, that's good eating. And then you add the gravy for the mashed potatoes. Are you kidding me? And see, this is one where you can make homemade mashed potatoes by um from scratch because you're doing other stuff. Because after after these potatoes are boiled, it's gonna be simple. Little one, two, three. Understand what we need. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna just put the meat back in there. Could have probably made six of these, but it's all right. I'll eat two, and Mr. Simple Pots will probably eat three. I don't like to have too many leftovers, honey, because let me tell you, you sit around and eat that mess. But anyway, that's how you do it. Flip them burgers are in there. Let me see. I like to break off a piece. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. Oh, that's good, y'all. Stop it. I'm going to put this on two. Just let it simmer. Man, you got the business going on. Oh, yeah. See how they're not lifting up on the fork? They're ready. They are ready. Yep. When you can't pick them up with that fork, they're ready. Let's cut it off or drain it, and then we'll start the mashed potato. Okay, y'all. We're getting ready to do the potato mash. Um, I got my pot sitting on my pot holder, and you need one of these, which is a uh, either meat smasher, potato smasher. You need one of these, okay? And you just take it and begin to smash your potatoes. And of course, this is very hot. See how it's smashing up your potatoes? Okay. I like a little chunk in mine, just a little bit. Mine don't have to be too creamy or too fine or too smashed. Just as long as you mash them up. Hence the term mashed potatoes. Okay. Sorry for the banging. Okay. And what I go ahead on and do, uh, everything tastes better with butter. So y'all, we're going to do the daggone thing. I had a half a stick left. And then I'm gonna take put a full stick in here. And the heat from the potatoes, of course, will melt down that butter. It's 
smells good already. Now, if y'all want to ante it up and put onion powder and chives and all that, you do that. We just want good, I, or I just want some good old fashioned mashed potatoes, buttery mashed potatoes. Okay. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is get me a regular spoon, another wooden spoon. And just go ahead on and start stirring it up. And again, remember this pan is still hot. Now, some people like theirs this thick. And they're good to go. Okay. I'm just going to pour a little bit of milk. I don't like mine to be watery or too creamy. But I'm going to eyeball it and pour maybe a fourth of a cup of milk. Just a little bit at a time. And I can determine how the thickness of how I like it. So to thin it out, just put a little milk in it. But again, some people just like theirs real thick like that. Let me taste it. Oh my God, that's so good. So good, just like that. But of course, I'm going to put a little salt in mine. And just a little pepper. Now, one little trick, and this is the only time y'all see me buy sour cream. I put a little bit of sour cream, about that much, a teaspoonful. And it just, it, it just does something, it kicks it up a different notch. And I like to put all this stuff in here first before I add salt and all that. And I'll add a little bit more milk. And that should give me the... Oh yeah, that's how I like it. It's getting to where I like it. Mm, I'm telling you, that sour cream, I'm telling y'all, it just gives it just enough. Okay, now I'm going to start adding a little salt. And a little pepper and again when you're cooking this type of stuff just add a little bit for taste when people fix their plate they can adjust the salt level but if you cook it with too much salt and stuff like this you can ruin the whole batch for people let them adjust their salt level if they need more salt they'll add it Oh, I'm telling y'all that is perfect. Oh, 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 that's good. And see, that's simple, y'all. Simple if you want to make your own homemade mashed potatoes. I might put just a tad bit more butter in it. But I don't, and, and, and then you can, there's still little bitty chunks of potatoes. Just, just, but the chunks in there are very, very soft. Mmm. And that lets people know, oh yeah, that's the one she made that homemade. And like I said, for me, all it needed was a little sour cream. <laughs> anyway, again, I just want to pay homage to my mother. Let's move this back onto the stove so it'll be warm. So when Mr. Silver Fox get here, I can fix his plate. And over here, look at that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then you got your broccoli. And y'all, that's dinner.
during the week on Sunday. And that's it. All right, y'all. Again, this is paying homage to my mom. Go to her channel. Come on in. Mama, I love you. Thank you for all the love and all the recipes.